Good evening and welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Alexander Armstrong. In the news this week, as the BBC staff bus arrives at Elstree, it's a warm welcome back from his colleagues for Leslie Grantham. <laughs> Gymnastics, and with only a few weeks to go, the British Olympic team are quietly confident. <laughs> and during half-time at the cup final, things don't look good for the man who booked Jimmy Hill and Ron Atkinson as a double act. <laughs> <laughs> on Ian Hislop's team is a comedian and television presenter who recently remarked, when people don't see you on TV, they assume you're dead. Which reminds me, how is Mel? Please welcome, <laughs> Jeffrey Jones. And with Paul Merton tonight is a cookery writer and broadcaster who says he's fed up with being referred to as the man who cooked the placenta. Must remember not to mention that. Please welcome Hugh Fernley Whittingstall. <laughs> Round one, Paul and Hugh, your view from the gallery. Uh huh. Um, I guess this was the incident on Wednesday, at Prime Minister Question Time. Uh, it's the flower power, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two papers were donated, brave, and this is then immediately, if it was an anthrax attack, what you should do as a member of parliament is rush out into the centre of London. For public transport, <laughs> and tell as many people about it as you possibly can. <laughs> uh, he's copied now, it's all beginning to work on him. <laughs> a lovely story for anyone who liked the letter P, really. Fraternity protesters pelt Parliament with purple powder. <laughs> Are you applying for a job on the mirror? <laughs> <laughs> there is one going. I, 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 <laughs> uh, do I want to see a reconstruction of it? Yes, please. Hmm. Sure. That's very good. Mm. And here's the report from ITN's security correspondent. I thought it was going to be poisonous at first, but then when the Yasha checked it out, I, then my mum told me, she said, it, I thought, oh, it was all right then. <laughs> yes, and the delivery system was... Condoms? A condom. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's it. It. They didn't say that. They wouldn't say that on the BBC News. First of all, Charlotte Green on the BBC radio said it was, it was, it was containers. <laughs> and then uh, Hugh Edwards went a little bit further and said it was bags. <laughs> if they were using condoms, there must have been a certain amount of stretching mm. involved, and then firing, and then... Uh, I yeah, think they went into sort of some sort of obscure wood somewhere and practised over many months of firing. images of Tony Blair. It was a raffle thing as well, wasn't it? Mm. They, they, won, they won the right, the tickets, to go into the public gallery. Was there a lot of people who wanted to chuck condoms <laughs> for the purpose of firing? You have to buy lottery, there's no way we can yeah. fit all in. <laughs> Luckily, Al-Qaeda don't go to charity lotteries very much. <laughs> Yeah, so um, why were the potatoes not behind the screens? Well, they paid somebody £600,000 to build that screen, didn't they? Mm. But unfortunately, it doesn't quite go right to the end. There's a big gap. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terribly British arrangement where it's very top security and you have a screen. But if you know someone, obviously, you can get tickets. <laughs> <laughs> you go around the side and throw something. <laughs> what did he actually say to Howard? He said, are you all right, didn't he? He said, I promise you, Michael, I did not plan that. <laughs> Howard replied, for once, Prime Minister, I believe you. <laughs> this is the Fathers for Justice protest in the House of Commons, which left Tony Blair and his cabinet colleagues covered in purple-dyed flour. MPs panicked and wafted their order papers. Well, this isn't the first time an unpleasant purple cloud has spread round the chamber from the vicinity of John Prescott. <laughs> Describing the incident, MP Julie Kirkbride said, the Prime Minister turned round to see what was going on, and we all sat there stupefied by the sight of this puffball hurtling towards us. <laughs> That's quite what Peter Mandelson thought he was doing. <laughs> Ian and Griff, here are your starters. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is Looking the oyster bar. Out. Yes, there's John Prescott. Yes, another one for me. <laughs> <laughs> Prescott's uh, eating all the canapes. <laughs> <laughs> there's a sight you don't yes. see often. Bye. No, <laughs> there's been a foul plot. Where does the plot take place? In a car park. Why only in the car park? It does seem strange, that doesn't it? Mm. You'd have thought if there was one advantage to being Deputy Prime Minister, it would be able to get a table at a restaurant. <laughs> Prescott tried to play down the, the significance of the oyster bar right. um, when he was tracked down by the BBC. Just for the record, in five minutes I was there, I bought kippers. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's complaining there, but actually he started this whole story going by giving an interview to the Times, saying, you know, saying, is there any trouble, you know, is Tony going to go? And he said that the plates were moving. Which is, a, I suppose, a concern for him generally in life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John Prescott took time out this week to, to do something else. Did anyone see that? Hang gliding? Uh, no, it wasn't. It was a game of football. <laughs> <laughs>
Round two is the tabloid headlines round. Ian and Griff riddle me read. Sonia, the Italian Gandhi, stuns India as she says no to a billion people. Is that a headline or is that the whole story? <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm just guessing here, Griff, but yes. my feeling is that yes. probably it's about Sonia Gandhi. No, mm. no, no. No? Yeah. no? <laughs> Completely I, wrong story. No. <laughs> I thought she'd stunned India as she said no to a billion people. <laughs> that's, that's, not, not, that's, that's not that story. <laughs> oh. What prompted her decision? Her entire family had been assassinated. <laughs> well, they'd been prime minister. That's a good enough reason for saying I don't want to be prime minister. <laughs> <laughs> and I've just thought of it. What do you mean mm. if the stock exchange went down? Is that what you Among other things, it did, yeah. I thought really the stock mean, exchange went up. It did. It did when she resigned. Oh, I see. So yeah, it went yeah. down when they thought she was going to be PM. And, and then it went, went up, up again. again. It did, it did then she should have said, no, no, I'll be PM. <laughs> and then she said, what's going on? For an entire week. This is the story of Sonia Gandhi, who this week declared she was stepping down for the good of her party and country. Only in India, eh, hey, Tony? Criticising the foreign origins of their prospective Prime Minister, Mrs Gandhi's opponents insisted that having an Italian Indian was a bad idea, as anyone who's ordered a tandoori chicken pizza will testify. <laughs> Paul and Hugh unscramble this. You say frittata, I say how much? Ah oh, yes, this is a restaurant in New York is selling the world's most expensive omelette. Mmm. Oh my god. Why is it so expensive? Were the eggs laid by the Pope or something? <laughs> It's a very crude, undignified, vulgar dish, I think, for people with more money than sense. Actually, now that I look at it, it's quite tasty. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that the foie See? gras on the bottom? Yes. I don't think there is foie gras on it. Well, well, I thought it. it was surf and turf. Yeah, I think... <laughs> <laughs> if it had small blue creatures in it, it'd be surf, turf and smurf. <laughs> <laughs> What's the most expensive thing you've ever made? Well, we, we get lovely lobsters down in, in Dorset, and I like lobster thermidor, classic English preparation, a little bit of uh, white wine, onions, cheesy sauce on top, a bit of mustard. Sorry, sorry, just <laughs> white wine. <laughs> <laughs> sweat the onions in a little bit of butter yeah. for a couple of minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sweat them. Sweat them just gently till they soften and go try to So they look a bit sort of like, I can't take much more of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when do you kill the lobsters? Yeah, Killing you know, lobsters is a very, very controversial issue. Yeah, there's, there's there is a humane way. The thing is, you just leave it under the grill and it thinks it's yes. getting a bit hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> and just slowly turn it up. Yeah. Yeah. No, the all looks nice. Who's having that? Yeah. <laughs> what they say for the domestic lobster yeah. dispatch is that you should put it for two to three hours in a deep freeze until it enters a state of deep torpor. And then, when you put it in boiling water, it's instant. And that, uh, that's what they recommend. But, you know, the other way is much nicer. That, if you've got a lobster in the freezer, it's like, oh, I wish I could, it's cold in here, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm coming out like, oh, that's better. That's a lot. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I think you're assuming that lobsters talk to themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he was talking to himself. I think it was just generally airing some grievances. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what sort of language is that, then, lobster talk? That's right, lobster talk. Oh, yeah. I see. <laughs> This is the zillion dollar frittata, a lobster and caviar omelette available in a New York restaurant for a mere thousand dollars. When the omelette was ordered, everyone in the restaurant started clapping and cheering, though not quite as loudly as when the waitress tripped over and dropped the plate. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Griff, Lond of the Rings. This must be London of the Rings. Mm. Nobody talks about going to Lund, do they? <laughs> <laughs> to do with the, the Olympic bid. Yeah, exactly right. We were third. Yeah. Well, we, we haven't were. been decided. I mean, we've just no. We were third in, no. the, in the in the no, no, order. No, no, we've got 14 months before we're turned down. <laughs> <laughs> so who are we up against? Par. We yeah. are par. Tor. Mad. Noob. Mad. Noob. And Moss. <laughs> we are nearly there, aren't we? We've now got that Sebastian Coe, Lord Coe. We have. He's now oh, heading it. Fantastic. Yeah. He did so much for William Hague. You know. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> There is speculation about uh, which venues will host which sports. Tennis at Wembley, football at Wimbledon, that sort of thing. <laughs> that kind of thing, yeah. And apparently the Horse Guards Parade will be hosting beach volleyball. Oh, is that true? true? Absolutely true, yeah. Peter Benbrough's oiling up his telescope as we... I've heard some euphemisms in my time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Don't one like to guess how much the bids cost us already? 26 quid. <laughs> 30 million. Uh, 30 million. 30 million. Yeah. 30 million. Yeah. I wasn't far off then. Not yeah. Yeah. Well, you're closer than us. Yes, yeah, so what did you say? <laughs> Nothing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, they, they told us we've got to sort out the transport system. They have, they've said, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, I think we'll put on a few extra night buses and we'll do it. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is the news that London has been shortlisted to hold the 2012 Olympics.
Reviewing the rival bids, the Mirror speculated what an opening ceremony in Paris might be like. Comedy Germans in World War II uniforms goose-stepping around the stadium. <laughs> he may be gone, but the spirit of Piers Morgan lives on. <laughs> According to the leader of France's bid, all we French have to do is erase our image of arrogance. <laughs> Paul and Hugh, gold fingered. This is the raid uh, up, at, up at Heathrow. Gang of villains after some gold bullion. One of them got away and he only had one arm. He was, he was your literal one-armed bandit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is true, this is totally true. And he was reckoned to be the brains behind the operation. Uh, obviously not the arm. <laughs> <laughs> only one of them. He might have been trying to raise some money to buy a new arm. It might be a humanitarian story, we just don't know, do That'll we? That'll be his defence when they catch him. Yep. Or an elaborately jewelled glove. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they raid it, they always go to the same place in Heathrow. That huge gold bullion storage place. Just <laughs> it's not written, there's big letters on and the door. And they, and, but the robbers have got them sorted. Because what they do is they keep a huge supply of policemen just outside that huge gold bullion thing. And as soon as the, the, the crooks arrive with their transit van, out come all these rosers and they catch them. It's fantastic what they can do these days. <laughs> it's every Wednesday. It's <laughs> <laughs> a very old-fashioned thing to be stealing. It's kind of a 70s yeah. crime caper type thing, isn't it? How fashionable is this crime? Well, we won't do that one then. <laughs> it's gold bullion, lads. Where to keep a tie? <laughs> <laughs> Who was revealed to be richer than the Queen this week? Was this this list of top criminals and how much they're earning? It was, exactly. Yes. And who remember? topped that list? Uh, Michael Winner. <laughs> <laughs> way above him. No, John above him. Goldfinger Palmer. Oh, who yes, yes, the time richer than the Queen. Time yeah. sure. The timeshare sure. Yeah. The timeshare man. You have access to this beach for three months of the year. <laughs> time sure. <laughs> <laughs> how did Palmer start his life of crime, incidentally? On a Wednesday at Heathrow, 1983, Brinks Mac. Robbery. Although we must point out that John Palmer was acquitted in the Brinks-Mack case. You know, some of the criminals, they used to go to the Hackney Empire all the time, and we want them to support that place. You Absolutely. know, a little bit of money to see it restored. Absolutely. Well, even, you know, the Cray brothers used to be down there murdering people in the back mm. of it. You know, we had just... Um, oh, but that was, that was variety, wasn't it? Yeah. Judges on the stage, murder in the bar, what more could yeah. you want? <laughs> anyway, this is the £100 million Heathrow heist, foiled by the Flying Squad. According to The Sun, the gang rightly suspected they were under surveillance and then wrongly continued with the raid. <laughs> Which means at the end of this round, Paul and Hugh have six, Ian and Griff have six. Round three is our odd one out round. Paul and Hugh, your four are <coughs> the Queen, mm -hmm. Ernest Hemingway, Madonna, and Hugh Fernley Whittingston. Uh, okay. I, think, I think it's to do with shooting stuff. Pheasants, uh, fishing. I mean, Madonna's moved down to the country now, and her and um, Guy like to do a bit of shooting. The Queen is involved with, with country sports. Uh, Hemingway would shoot elephants and do fishing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I like a little bit of fishing. Um, bag the odd pigeon for the pot, that sort of thing. But that's not really getting us to who the odd one out is. But I think... <laughs> Mm. Uh, uh, <laughs> the Queen recently was seen in the last sort of few months strangling a pheasant. Has that got anything to do with it? It has. She strangled a pheasant. Yeah. Right. Hemingway never strangled an elephant. It takes forever. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to take three weeks on a stepladder. You go. <laughs> Feel the bond to distract it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you strangled a chicken? I do strangle chickens from time to time. Strangle chickens? Yeah. In the supermarket or just when they're running around? <laughs> Uh, Hemingway's the only one. He didn't strangle dead animals. He didn't He's not the odd one out, but you are, you're absolutely right. Uh, Madonna Ma is the odd one out. Is the odd one yeah. out. She's the odd one out. She's yeah. never strangled anything. They've all strangled birds, except for Madonna, who, as part of her devotion to Kabbalah, uh, likes to swing a chicken round her head. Yeah, exactly. She's allowed Swings. to blast them out of the sky with a No, she's not. She's no. not. She's not. Now, no, she's allowed happened. to look pretty while Guy blasts them out of no, the sky. No, even he's not. Well, he's been warned that the, the souls of dead pheasants might come back to haunt him. That would be a quite an extraordinary sight, souls of dead pheasants. Would they still have all the plumage? <laughs> Following you around everywhere you went. You've got an important business meeting in Hollywood. You're talking about this new film that you want to direct. Suddenly, the, the souls of 5,000 dead pheasants. <laughs> what do you say? You just say, oh, these are just some uh, actors I was going to work with. How do you explain that one? Griff, has that ever happened to you? Two or three slightly wounded pheasants follow me around. Isn't Posh Spice just been identified as also being one of these Kabbalah Kabbalah people? She has, yeah. She's yeah. also she's wearing one of those funny little red, little red uh, things. I read that as well. Yeah, according to the paper, she'll have to pay 10% of her earnings to the religion. That's another fiver in the kitty, which is... <laughs> <laughs> um, the 
queen strangled a wounded peasant when she was out shooting in 2000. There uh, was photographs doing so, but uh, she's recently favoured another method of dispatching, or with a, a, a priest. Short stick, not a cleric. Are short sticks called priests? Oh, yes. Always. Yeah. Are they? It's um, sometimes a piece of wood mm. hollowed out with a bit of lead in the end to make it's it... It's called excellent. a pencil, then. <laughs> What's your preferred method of stoking the chickens? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> you have a, if you want a straight answer to that question, uh, <laughs> uh, <coughs> my preferred method is dispatching my cockerels mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for the pot is uh, the old-fashioned neck ringing. Uh, yeah, have you noticed there are 15,000 chickens hovering behind you? <laughs> Mm. What was your uh, recommendation for ways of alerting shoppers to the quality of the meat they were buying? Well, I had an idea that we should start on all the chill cabinets in the supermarkets. We should have a little bit of streamed video of the method of production. I think that might change shopping habits quite sharply. If you want to buy halibut, do you just get a view of the Atlantic Ocean? <laughs> <laughs> you don't give your animals names anymore, do you? No, not really. Well, like, <laughs> oh, <stop. laughs> I once had a tortoise called Mr. Willoughby, but after that I came up the he never answered to it. He was just his name was Frank. What sort of name do you give the breeding stock then? Well, I have two Donner. sons. Loser. <laughs> More like stud. Okay. Well, I have a sow called Delia. Does Delia know this? I'm not you sure that named the great big fat sow after. <laughs> According to the Telegraph, Hugh Fernley Whittingstall once wrote a recipe for puppy. Is that true? You could have described it as a satirical article. A oh, puppy isn't just for Christmas, it's also for dinner. <laughs> It's the only joint of meat that helps you by rolling over on its back. Yeah. <laughs> One female journalist visiting meat enthusiast Hugh Fernley Whittingstall admitted she felt squeamish when presented with an entire tongue, grey and curled fatly around on itself like a question mark. Which Hugh now admits was a bit forward for a first time. <laughs> In November 2000, the Queen was photographed wringing the neck of a pheasant. After the incident, one royal gamekeeper said, it's your moral responsibility to dispatch a creature if it's wounded, adding, and how is the gammy knee, your majesty? <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Griff, mm. your four are Piers Morgan, Michael Grade, yes. Ryan Parry, and Alistair Campbell. Now, Piers Morgan is a bit of a The... The... And not only that, he's looking like one at the time, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> not really Tell me, you're more involved in the world of journalism there, yeah. Ian. So who is this bloke on the, on the bottom, the one with the bald head? This no. is Ryan Parry, right. who's the footman who went into the, uh, Buckingham Palace and saw the Tupperware and um, the, the furnishings and said it was a security issue. It was, in fact, it was a chance to sneer at her bedroom, really. Mm. And he worked for the Mirror, and uh, Piers used to work for the Mirror. I think Ryan Parry still works there. Alistair Campbell did briefly... At one point, worked for the mirror. No, I the think. no, I'm mm -hmm. sure the mirror worked for him. <laughs> what about their, their rookie days? Ah, showbiz columns. Piers Morgan did a showbiz column for Bazaar for the Sun. Is that ele relevant? No, uh, about where they. I suppose about their, their beginnings. Beginnings as junior reporters. Yes, they all started uh, at the no, mirror apart from Campbell. So apart from apart Piers Morgan, Morgan. Apart from Piers Morgan. Apart from Piers Morgan. Morgan. Yeah. 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 And what happened after he was sacked last Friday? The nation rejoiced. <laughs> <laughs> And just beneath the hubbub. Do you know, I don't remember much after that announcement. <laughs> <laughs> he was frog-marched out of the building. He was. Yeah, yeah. Anyone know one of Piers' favourite sayings? I'm going to get you. you. Yes. Watch out and your family. He's a charming bloke, Piers. <laughs> Today's cock of the walk, tomorrow's feather duster. Ah. Anyone remember his uh, sparkling performance on this show? Mm, no. No, I think, I think we should see it again to we remind ourselves. We have to have a little look at it. The answer is tennis ball, uh, the tragic tale of a two-ton hippo who swallowed a tennis ball in Germany. Surely you must have covered that in the day. Yes, yeah, you know. Doing very well on these, page you? five story. What do you know about newspapers in class? <laughs> about as much as you do. Mirror now is almost as good as the sun. <laughs> Just how I was rude to you, said the photographer's around at my doorstep the next day, so I'm not doing that again. No. You uh, won't see them this time. <laughs> Sorry, this <laughs> He is charming, isn't he? <laughs> so don't try the popularity line with me here. Why? Anybody here like it? <laughs> Do you like it? Anybody actually like it? <laughs> 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 it's 
You've changed a lot, Paul, haven't yes, you? Yes, I was a lot bolder in them days. I'm <laughs> <laughs> educated. I fell on my head. <laughs> um, so, Ryan Parry. Yeah. What do the palace officials do to check his references before he was given oh, a yeah. job? They rang a man in a pub. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, said, do you know him? And they said, yeah, he's fine. He's a good bloke. So he got the job. So he got it. <laughs> what, was, uh, what was Tony Blair's nickname for Campbell? Yeah. Sir. <laughs> Prime Minister. And he called him Kino. Why is that? Because he was keen. <laughs> After Roy Keane, who is uh, famed for his aggression and short temper. Oh, okay. Apparently Blair would say, come on, Kino, hold on, hold on. <laughs> anyway, the answer is that they all trained at the Daily Mirror, except for Piers Morgan, who trained at the Sun. After a previous gaffe, Piers Morgan said, I usually like to celebrate a massive error with a few bottles of Krug and a jug of Jack Daniels. Treat yourself, Piers, this one's a two-jugger. <laughs> <laughs> According to the Daily Mail, it was Alistair Campbell who famously spotted that John Major tucked his shirt into his underpants after coming out of the toilet on a plane. Though the scoop he missed was that Edwina was still in there straightening her skirt. <laughs> Missing words round is next. This week's guest publication is Eurofruit. Quite good for the first few issues, but then it all went a bit pear-shaped. <laughs> what is not a problem for dolphins? The sea. <laughs> Pama salada. <laughs> Cherry tomatoes. The answer is dandruff. Um, is it dandruff? <laughs> Damn, I was just going to say that. I was going to say A-level maths. <laughs> <laughs> According to the Telegraph, if dolphins didn't shed their skin, it would affect their ability to glide through water. Not half as much as getting caught up in a tuna net. Next. <laughs> Who wants to smell like what? A courgette. Not a fruit one. A courgette's a vegetable. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's a actually, it's, actually, technically, it's a fruit, because it's got the seeds on the inside and the fleshy bit on the outside, so technically, it's a fruit. Does the seed on the inside it's mean it's like a fruit? Madonna. Oh, it does, yeah. But what about strawberry? It's got seeds on the outside. Oh, is that a fruit? Uh, that so is you a, don't know, do that you? That is a berry. <laughs> It's That's a berry. fruit. Oh, it's it a berry fruit. fruit. It's oh, so the, the, the name. It's the only fruit with its seeds on the outside. It's the exception that proves the rule. Oh, okay, I'll move you there. All right. Was that true? Yes. Yeah. Because you sounded a bit as though you were making it up. Yeah. <laughs> I stand by my fruity definition. Yes, he does. A buddy dipped in creosote. <laughs> Sir Sniff Richard. Yeah, this is uh, 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 launching his perfume. own range of perfumes. There's to well, be an aftershave called? called Bachelor Boy. Oh. Use it, and that's the way you'll stay. <laughs> Next, for sale on eBay, a collection of what? Knickers. Yeah, my yes. wife's old knickers. My cheating wife's knickers. <laughs> According to the Express, you will often be surprised by how much you can get for things you think are worthless. But not always. <laughs> this. <laughs> this signed photo of it in his lot, for example, has a reserve price of 99 pence and oh. has so far attracted no bids. <laughs> I'm not interested to know, Ian, that uh, as of yesterday, the site had only received six hits. You must bear in mind that four of those are from researchers on this. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Core. What is a cool name? Apple. Apple. A that's Gwyneth Paltrow's yeah. new baby. Yeah. Apple is the right answer, Apple, yeah. yeah. This is Chris Martin and Gwyneth Paltrow's baby, which they decided to call Apple. Gwyneth Paltrow told The Express, Apple is a very cool name. Yes, it is, Gwyneth, for a fruit. <laughs> <laughs> There are lots of people called fruits now, aren't they? Yeah. Peaches. Cherries. Yeah. Cherries. Plum. Plum side. Mm -hmm. Pomegranate. Mm -hmm. Prescott. <laughs> Is there anybody called Tom Arto? <laughs> Tom Arto. According to the Express, it was a long and painful birth. In fact, they nearly called her watermelon. <laughs> and finally, Wogan gives the Eurovision what? Top marks for corruption or something. Douze points. Douze points for corruption. That's right, Terry Wogan fumed. People have accused me of taking it too seriously, but you have to take the voting seriously. Terry, you're taking it too seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Wogan was angry that so many neighbouring countries collaborated in voting for each other, including Macedonia, Montenegro, Serbia, Croatia and Bosnia. So you're right, Terry, a little more rivalry between the Balkan states. That's what we need. <laughs> So the final score is Ian and Griff have nine, Paul and Hugh have twelve. No, awesome. So before we go, here's the caption competition. <laughs> Queen saying to the priest, can I borrow you to whack across the back of the head of a fence? <laughs> <laughs> He's saying to the Queen, and the thing is, ma'am, you can rest your beer on my hat while I'm doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Queen is amused by Bishop on wheels. 
I leave you with the news that, with Euro 2004 a month away, it's confirmed that Emil Heskey is in the England squad. <laughs> On the steps of TV Centre, two BBC executives kindly allow Ronnie Corbett to go in first. <laughs> And in Thailand, it's payback time for the boy whose great-grandfather invented the umbrella stand. <laughs> Good night.